When you study the determinants of ICT access and usage, and uh, I have spent a considerable amount of time looking into what determines who access and uses what kind of digital technology, what you find is you often find that women access and use the internet less than men usually. So there's a negative correlation between being a woman and ICT access and usage. This is very persistent. Well, many people say, well, that's obvious because ICT is technology. That's like toys for the boys. Women are naturally technophobic. They are scared of these technologies and, and, and that's why they try to stay away from them. And that's the reason why we have this finding. And now I personally, I never, I never bought that because it completely contradicts also my individual, my personal experience. For example, if you look at the mobile phone bills and traffic generated by me and by my wife, it's ridiculous. I mean, how much more traffic and how much more she uses the mobile phone very effectively as well. I mean, as the stereotype goes, what do we men do? It's like, hey dude, wanna meet tonight? Yep. Seven? Yep. That was it. I mean, every mobile phone operator would go bankrupt if that would be the amount of traffic that's generated, you know. And mobile phone operators, many of them, they make 70, 80% of their revenue with the traffic generated by women. So women are natural communicators, much more extensive, much more efficient communicators as well than men. So, so to me, it, it, it never said in that women are somehow technophobic with ICT. It might be maybe some other technologies, but communication technology? Well, communication, I mean, women, so it never really settled. Now, in order to explain to you what's wrong here, and why we have this finding and, and what's going wrong here. I have to go a step back and um, tell you about something that's called these spurious correlation or confounding variables. For example, have a look at, at this graph here. And uh, what is the conclusion that you draw when you look at this graph? It is most probably not that we have to consume more cheese in order to increase the number of civil engineering doctorates. Sure, they both go together very clearly, but is one causing the other or one affecting the other? Well, they just go together. Or look at this one here. The number of movies that the American actor Nicolas Cage participated in is cons persistently accompanied by the number of people who are killed being hit by sports equipment. Now, if Nicolas Cage stops participating in movies, some people might be very happy about that, but it, it might probably not affect the number of people who are killed being hit by, by sport equipment. So, so what's wrong here? Try to figure out this one. So here we have children between the ages two and 18, so children and teenagers, and we find that the shoe size of these children is correlated positively with their internet usage. That means that children with smaller shoes use the internet less and children with bigger shoes use the internet more. So the obvious policy conclusion is that we somehow have to make our children's feet grow, uh, maybe through I don't know how, uh, but that would then mean that automatically they use the internet more. Or does it not? What's wrong here? What's wrong here is that we didn't consider age. So we have children between two and 18, and these here are probably the younger children, and these here are the older children. And younger children have smaller shoes and they cannot even read. So, so they use the internet obviously much less. So on generally have your confounding variable, age, age and with that reading skills, education level and so forth confound here. If you would look at children at the same age, you probably will not find such a correlation. So actually you can sometimes lie with statistics just by leaving some out and having a spurious correlation between two other ones. Often it is very tricky to find out if there really is something, if there's not. And sometimes people 
I don't know if purposefully, but they come up with pretty interesting things. For example, check that out here. That's the number of lawyers in Washington DC in the capital. And as the number of lawyers in the capital grows, so do the number of deaths by people who died because they had food stuck in their respiratory tract. <sighs> They did not even swallow anymore, right? So if you would really be evil-minded, you might be able to make an argument that the more lawyers, more problems, more... But seriously? Well, in reality, I have seen arguments much more ridiculous than that, and people really argue these things. So you have to be careful because, you know, statistically, yes, both of them go impressively together. Other times it's not as easy. For example, check that out. This is the number of mobile phone subscriptions in the UK and the number of deaths of people who died because of falling and tripping. <laughs> now, sometimes if you're outside and you see people only looking in their mobile phone, you wonder, is that a health hazard or is it not? So is there or is there not now some correlation? Well, you have to be very careful. And that's why also people say there are three kinds of lies. There are lies, there are damn lies, and there are statistics. And, uh, but there's a way you can parse that out. What you basically do is you do controlled correlations. You can imagine the logic much like this one here. So basically you take different variables apart if you have them and you fix one, you keep it fixed. For example, here we keep the income level fixed and we see does the other one have an independent, a standalone effect. So people at the same level of income, does education have an effect? Or people at the same level of education, does income have a standalone independent effect and, and so you basically take the different variables apart you fix one part of it and see if the other one still has an effect or not and then you can know well do they or do they not so that's how this statistical method of controlled regressions actually works so it was my suspicion that something like this might be going on here in the correlation between women and ICT. Uh, that this is just as a, as a fake correlation. That there are some confounding variables that we forget to consider and they lead to this spurious correlation. So what I did is I looked at three additional variables. The level of income of women and men, the level of employment of women and men and the kind of employment and education. So basically I looked at a woman with the same level of income, employment and education as a man. And these are the ones I compared them with regard to internet usage and ICT access and usage. And what I found after I did that is that this correlative correlation turned positive. What does that mean? It means women with the same level of employment, with the same income and with the same education, they used ICT more than men. What that basically also says is that the reason why women themselves have used less information technology than men, it doesn't stem from the fact that they are women. It stems from the fact that women are really discriminated. In terms of income, women earn less for the same work that they do. In the terms of employment and in, the terms of, in terms of education. So women receive on average less education than men, uh, don't have as much employment and get less income. Now with less income, you can buy less ICT. And education, we also say, has to do with ICT. But the fact of being a woman has nothing to do with it. So what we can now also see that this has big implications. Why? Because, you know, if you think like, oh, it has to do with being a woman, the policy implication would be, well, they're technophobic, so we have to spend a lot of money to train women on how to use a mobile phone, for example. Now, actually, according to my finding here, that would be a waste of money. Women, they're not technophobic. They handle mobile phones extremely well, better than men. What we have to work on is we shouldn't discriminate women with regard to the money they earn. If they would have enough money, they would buy all the ICT that they could. And uh, this actually turns the entire story around because, on the other hand, think about it this way, ICT 
also are an opportunity to fight these long-standing issues of gender discrimination. Because for example, with ICT access and usage, women can improve their income and their employment. For example, ICT allow to, for working from home and their level of education, even if it's interrupted through maybe a, 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 a pause with regards to children. So ICT are a big opportunity to fight these long standing gender discrimination issues. And so my basic message here is you have to be very careful when you work with these statistics. And uh, I always recommend just to take another statistics class because it allows you to understand the world much better and to fall for less pitfalls.